Hello everyone and what a way to start 2024 with arguably the best model locomotive and double O gauge we have ever seen. I'm Eric, this is my channel, welcome and this is the Cavalex Class 56, stay tuned. So yes, here we are. This is the highly anticipated Class 56 from Cavalex Models. This is their first locomotive to reach production and it's very exciting for us model railway fans. So I have got three very large boxes in front of me. The standard Cavalex Orange, as you'd expect from the standard releases. And then we've got this beautiful GBRF twin pack release. So we have 56049 in Colas livery. We have 56091 in DCR livery, and we have 56098 and 081, which feature in the GBRF twin pack above. So let's not delay any further. Let's get the boxes open and see what we're getting. Those of you that have followed the channel for a while may remember last summer, I actually reviewed the Cavalix Class 56 pre-production model. So it's very nice to now have the production version of that same Colas model here. And it does not disappoint. Look at that, it's absolutely stunning. So the locos are screwed to this little plastic, almost display plinth, if you like. And this isn't something I've seen done in double O gauge. So they are actually screwed into the underneath of the loco, which is the battery boxes, I believe. And uh, you really can, be quite aggressive with these they're not going to go anywhere bits aren't going to fall off uh, and it's a really good idea obviously to get them in it probably can be slightly fiddly however it's as simple as hold the loco upside down place the plinth on top get the screw screw started and just screw them down so you've got a bit of play and then you just need to make sure the flanges of the wheels are on the outside of the little raised part of the plinth so that it's located properly and then just give it that final screw down and then you're not going to damage anything. It's easy to get out of the box like this as well. And obviously the box is cut out for that purpose. So they simply just slot in and in the box, nothing's going to happen to it. And uh, it should be safe for years to come. So that's a nice little feature. These also have another little nifty thing. And that is for the nameplates, they actually have a little template which uh, the manual does cover. If we just grab the manual here. I would recommend obviously reading it before you start. But here you go, we have instructions on fitting the nameplate and the template locates over the body side handrails so that you can't possibly get the nameplate in the wrong place. What a great idea that is. Again, something I've never seen before and it really goes to show the level of uh, detail that the Cavalex guys have gone to to get all this correct so that you can get the models correct yourself by fitting the nameplates in the right place. You also get your usual detail bag as you'd expect. These come with the normal sort of stuff. So you've got plenty of uh, brake pipe hoses, we've got main res hoses, and uh, we've got control air pipes. We've also got a couple of tension lock couplings in there and we do have little blanks for if you're not using the tension lock coupling just to add to that little bit of detail. So uh, that's always nice to see, happy days. So how difficult is it to get it out of this cradle? Let's see, obviously you will need a Phillips screwdriver, which you will have in most households. Simply unscrew both of these screws. And then pull them out away and that's it. Obviously you can place that back in the box. Don't lose the screws or the little plate underneath. You will need that to put it back in the box. And you can see there the screw holes in the bottom of the battery box. That reveals a very, very nicely detailed model. And uh, it also reveals the bogies in great detail and they're fantastic. We'll have to get a closer look at those. They're very impressive. So that's the Colas model out of the box in. Next up, let's go for the DCR version. And uh, there's the loco then in all its glory. Now this is one that I was very excited for because this actually does run through my own layout in real life. So obviously I had to have it and you can see that the color and the roof, all the detail looks spot on. There's no issues at all. So we're two out of two for loose bits in the box. 
we're looking good. So again, take our little screwdriver and we will release the DCR version. And there we go, DCR looking good. And here we are then, this is the GBRF Special Limited Twin Pack. Now, the artwork on this is stunning. What a really nice picture they have found for the front. That is absolutely brilliant. And it's really nice just to see something a little different from the normal packaging, just to make this set that little bit more special. Inside, as you'd expect, the usual instructions. But releasing the foam, reveals these two beautiful machines. Now it's quite a simplistic way of doing it really. They basically just designed the outer box to fit two of the inserts, one on top of the other. Why would you do it any different? It's so simple, it obviously works. And again, you're just not gonna break anything. They're great, they both come on the cradles, obviously easy to get out. Um, so yeah, this is 56098 and 56081. Now, I'm going to go out on a whim here and say that this, I think, is my favourite looking of the four. Um, I've thought about this long and hard, and I think this has to be the winner for me, just because of the picked out grills and stuff, and it just looks very impressive in its, lar in its large logo livery. 81, however, is still a bit of a favourite of mine, because it happens to be the only Class 56 I've ever had a go in. The Loco was left running at the rear of a set, so I had to ride in it. And then um, we got near Derby and uh, change ends, and I ended up actually going in the front. So that was really nice. So it's really nice to have this as a bit of a keepsake. But um, also you get the usual detailed bags, as we mentioned earlier. However, there is one small difference. Being as this is the Farewell Tour Pack, Cavalex wanted to mark that occasion with something a little bit special. Now, if you look in the detail bag, we actually have headboards to go on these locomotives. Now, I know some of you will have probably realised this, and what I'm talking about is that they actually have a lamp iron missing. So you can just see it there without getting the loco out. That lamp iron is missing off the front end. Now, I know I've seen one or two people question this, what they haven't realised is that lamp iron is in the detail bag. You can see it just down there. But it also is the way that the headboards locate. So you have the option of fitting the headboards or you can fit a lamp bracket. So what a clever little way of doing it. It saves you gluing one to the front of your loco and never being able to change it. So this should just be a case of you can push it in and uh, when you want to take it off, you can pull it back out again. So what a clever little idea, Cavalex. I really like that. And of course you get two sets, so that's always nice. And uh, in the bag, plenty of spare lamp irons, just in case you lose one. We've got tension lock couplings, and again, all the brake hoses and the little dummy NEM pocket uh, covers. So a uh, very nice little set. So again, let's get 81 and 98 out of their cradles. And uh, once that's all done, we'll get them lined up and we'll get a nice shot of them all together. What can I say? They look absolutely spectacular. The detail is incredible. I'm just looking at them from behind the camera, the same sort of angle as you right now. And straight away, the thing that sticks out the most, I think, is number one, the relief on the bogies. The bogies are incredible. Number two, the inside of the cabs. So you can see straight through the windows. You can see full seating in there, full cab desks, the light. And probably my favourite piece, to be honest, is this Loco's biggest party trick, and that is the fans. Now, the grill that covers the fans is very finely done. And um, on the examples with the black roofs especially, you can really see the fans nice and clearly. So that's going to look great when they're going along and spalling up. Because remember, of course, they are completely independent from each other. So that's a lovely little touch. You can see also uh, a slight difference. The DCR one doesn't have roof aerials. They are blanked off on this example. So it's one less thing for me to break off with my uh, stubby little fingers. Uh, the other three though have those nice little thin aerials on the roof. Uh, 81 actually has different handrails on the cab. If I just move you slightly, 
you can see that there. So it's got split ham rails on the cab front because the high intensity lamp is up in the way. So that's something I never noticed before until now just looking. Um, but yeah, I think we probably need to get a closer look at these bogey frames because they're pretty special. So 98 is on the rolling road then, just so we can give it a good test run in a minute and go through some of the sound and uh, just see how well it runs. But just initially, let's have a look at these bogeys and straight away you can see they're quite impressive. So just a few little things to point out is the axle end covers have even got the bolt heads picked out. You've got all the equalising beams underneath for the suspension. The primary springs are really well done with great relief in them. The brake cylinders are all there. You've got all the brake linkage as well. You've got the bogey retaining sling. You've got your dampers here. Uh, it's just everywhere you look, there's something else. You've even got wiring running along the rear of it all, along the frame itself. Not to mention these beautifully done steps under the cab doors. They're really nice. They are obviously all separately fitted parts. Uh, we've got sandboxes here with sandpipes that are mounted to the chassis. And um, unlike my old Hornby example, they don't seem to get in the way and cause derailments, which is nice. Obviously, um, moving around to the front, you've got the same level of detail. You've got that lovely horn grill there, high intensity lamp, of course, you've got the different versions for depending on what model you get. That nice little roof mounted aerial. And I love the windscreen surrounds on these, the way you've got the bolt holes and they're all picked out. And especially on this livery, it really does just stick out. It's just that extra little bit of detail, it's lovely. Uh, of course, you've got all the different types of lights, the cab fronts, blah de blah, as you'd expect. You've got your um, super duper sprung buffers, if that's what you're into. But of course, if you're going to all that effort, then you might as well. So well done, Cavalix, on those. Um, one major feature of the front end, which is nice, which is something that probably people probably don't talk about that much, the kinematic coupling, it works. <laughs> I don't know how many of you have experienced Hornby 56s, but my Hornby 56, the coupling is next to useless. It's too stiff and all it does is pull your wagons off and derail everything. So I've seen a number of people actually glue a coupling onto the bogey frame, which of course doesn't really work as well. Um, but the Cavalex guys have got it right. It's not too harshly sprung. It's uh, just about right for what we need in this scale. In the middle of the loco then, between the bogeys, you can see we've got the nice battery boxes there picked out with the vents and stuff. And the compressor is a very highly detailed bit of kit with lots of very thin pipe work. But what is nice about it is you can touch it and it doesn't feel like it's all gonna fall apart. There's not little bits pinging around everywhere. Like you can see, I can scrape it with the end of a paintbrush. Nothing's going wrong there. It's the same story with the bogeys really. You can be, I know I'm risking damaging my model here, but stuff just doesn't fall off it's really well built so uh, it just it's just testament to the guys that have uh, obviously been through this process and getting them right moving on livery wise you can see how fine it is there's no blurry bits there's no damage and if i zoom in nine times on my camera obviously it's not very good quality you'll have to take my word for it but you can just about read all of the top panel which is pretty mad to be honest and i have noticed um there are even bits on some of the other liveries. So for example, there's, I believe a BR blue one and it's got the number. And I see someone saying about, oh, well, the eight is up the wrong way around, blah, blah, blah. But then if you go back and look at the picture of the logo, X works, it was actually fitted upside down and incorrect in the first place. So they really have gone to town with the level of uh, detail and being anal on getting the liveries spot on. Just to add to the level of detail in the body side moulding itself. Did you know that the Cavalex guys have gone to the lengths of making sure that the roof grills are actually see-through? If you put a light there, okay, you can see all the way through them. How ridiculous is that? It's just another little thing, which uh, you wouldn't always notice first off, but it just sort of makes it, and uh, it shows the level they've gone to because it, they are full relief as they should be. I bet the factory have uh, had a lot of fun trying to get this to all work. So I think they've done a pretty good job. As I'm sure a lot of you have seen by now, panning around onto this area of the roof, you can actually remove it. And that gives you easy access to your decoder of choice, which in the sound fitted examples is a lock sound V5. Uh, obviously on a DCC ready one, if you don't want sound 
then they recommend to use a Lock Pilot 5 because it has the same amount of functions. It basically does the same job as a Lock Sound V5, just without the sound aspect. So if you're spending all this money on a high-end Loco, then you're probably better off spending the money on a decent decoder as well. It shouldn't cost you a lot more, but you will be able to get the functionality of all the lights. However, of course, you will need to make sure that decoder has been set up for this individual Loco. With lighting becoming as complicated it is, as it is nowadays, it does often require an individual setup of the decoder itself. But if you go to uh, most decent providers of decoders, such as Roads and Rails, or even Cavalex when they get their own one out, then uh, it should be set up for you if you specify that at the time of ordering. But yeah, easy to get to. You can also see at the back here, you've got the dip switches, which are for DC running. So they let you control some of the aspects of the loco, such as lighting. So uh, that's a very handy little feature, easy to get in and out. And uh, it doesn't really go anywhere. Once you've placed it on, you can see a nice, uh, decent fit there. And also what is nice is the shut lines aren't too pronounced. Obviously being quite zoomed in here, it's probably a little bit harsher. Um, but to the naked eye, you don't really notice it, to be honest. Another nice feature of the roof, other than the fans, which we'll move on to in a sec, that is something that people don't probably think about, is the fact that the exhausts are actually um, hollowed out. The speaker obviously sits under here, so that means that the sound actually escapes from the loco properly out of the roof. Now, this is normally not something you really think about, but it's quite apparent on my layout because I have a tunnel and the noise change going through the tunnel is actually really quite impressive. Obviously, I've had a little play with a couple of these before filming this, hence I know that, and uh, I've really enjoyed it. So um, I'll have to get a video of two or two of one shooting through my tunnel just so you can get an idea. But it really does change the sort of way it sounds. Uh, and it's a lot clearer for that as well. You find a lot of locos, there's nowhere for the sound to escape and it muffles the sound quite a lot. going to be better off looking at the fans when the loco is actually up and running so we can see them in action so what i think i'll do first is because you can't see them through the windows very well unless it's in person i'm actually going to take the body shells off i say body shells there's only one because uh, i want to have a good look at this cab detail and share it with you all so there we go there's the body shell off and uh, handily it's plunger pickups for the uh, cab lights so there's no wires or sockets to have to worry about in this thing and that does reveal the ESU speaker inside with the fan assembly so what I'll do is I'll pop one of the cabs out it should be as easy as just splaying apart the body shell ever so slightly with your fingers and then that's it there you go grab the cab interior so how easy was that so let's have a close look so how's that for a cab interior then? So it's got all the details you'd expect and it is full relief. So that's also nice. Um, in a class 56, there is actually an issue with headroom. When you get in the cab, um, as I've been on be one before, it's very easy to bang your head up here. So it's quite nice that they've actually um, used this bit to help it locate in the body shell because it is a bit of a problem in reality. But you can see there we've got full seats uh, and something with the seats that is quite handy is if you go and speak to Model U, I believe Cavalex have gone and had a little scanning session with them. But the scanning session that came out of it was that you can get the Cavalex guys that you know and love, and they actually are sat on their own seats. So you simply pull these seats out and you replace the whole assembly. So the Model U figure comes with the seat inbuilt. Now I believe Model U will actually scan you and sort it out so that you can actually be sat in the seat as well in the same way. So you can simply basically plug yourself in. So that's a nice little feature. But you can see there the cab desk is all there. We've got the brake controller on the left. We've got the power handle there. We've got the direction, uh, direction controller and all the gauges are there. Really nice. So um, because the glazing is so clear, I'm quite pleased that they've gone with having all the dials. You can clearly see on here the speedo as well which is pretty sweet like i quite like that um the cab's got its hot plate on the second man side as well let's so, say yeah it's just a little feature i thought i would show it also i suppose shows on the loco how the lights are done 
so the headlights, tail lights are all housed in this little block here that sits obviously in front of the cab desk. So again, that just makes it really easy. It means there's nothing on the body shell to worry about because it's all um, handled by the chassis itself. So you just pretty much unclip the body shell and away you go. Not to forget the rear of the cab interior, which actually is left behind on the chassis itself. And as you can see here, we've got some sort of conduit here. We've got a few bits and bobs around near the roof line. And we've got that door that would lead into the cooler group compartment on this end or the clean air compartment on the other end. If we were to put the cab back in place, I think it goes roughly there. So it just goes to show the uh, relief in there because I suppose you've got the walkway where the door would sit. And then uh, you've got the bit where you bang your head going through into the actual um, cab desk area, like in real life. There is the loco then with the body shell off viewed from above. And once again, you can see that area where the decoder is housed and the dip switches for running on DC mode. You can see this nice new ESU speaker that was developed um, in parallel with this locomotive. And these are now readily available on their own outside of this loco. And let me tell you, they're a brilliant bit of kit. I've actually got two or three now fit to other locos and they really do sound great. They've got that great mix of bass and treble now that they've got the little sugar cube speaker installed in there as well and whereas this is the same sort of size as an em1 speaker uh, em1 speakers were four ohm but only half a watt if i remember now, these are four ohm and three watt overall so they are very loud and perfect for this loco they really do give a great balance you can see very well picked out now the roof fans they're really nice i like the angled blades on there as well they look great um, but of course they look even greater running so I wonder if we fire the loco up now we might be able to see the fans running without the body shell on just to give you uh, an even better look so what I'll do is I'll start the loco running just on the rolling road as is and then I'll start the engine sounds and see if the fans then pick up How's that? That's pretty impressive, I think. So let's run through some of those sounds then. We'll uh, try and do it in a bit of a realistic order if you like. Now, Cavalex have gone to the effort of making sure that the main functions that you would want to use are under function 12. So people with uh, controllers such as, I don't know, a Gage Master Prodigy Express, I think they only have 12 functions, for example, they can access all of the lighting outputs and things like that. So that's the reason it's a bit of a, a different function list to what you're probably used to previously. But anyway, let's get started. So we probably want the cab door first so we can actually get in the thing. So that's on number 28. We probably want to put some lights on so we can see what we're doing. Number 16 for the cab lights. Let's put some uh, head and tail lights on. So F0 just operates the yard lights. So the markers down the bottom there, as you can see. And if we change direction, you will have the tail lamps there. And of course, as you can see, the cab light has changed ends as well. If you instead press F10, then that is stabling lights. So if I change direction there and just turn that headlight off, if you had F10 on, stabling lights will put reds at both ends. So if this is in a yard or a depot, this is how you'd have it displayed with reds on both ends of the loco. So get rid of that, put zero back on. And let's go for an engine start. However, another little thing you can do on this is if you use function one and press on, off, on in quick succession, it will give you a little bit of a longer engine start sequence. So this simulates more of a cold start, sort of first start of the day, something like that. So 
That was lovely, doesn't it? Now, I suppose we're going to want some air in this loco so we can power the horns and the brakes. There we go, that's function 11, which is the compressor. You can run that to your heart's content, or I believe it should run randomly as well. So once you're happy you've got enough air in your loco, you can switch 11 off. Then, of course, now that we're all blown up ready, you've got function 3 and 4 for your playable warning horns. And function 2 does your two-tone horn. Function 2 can also operate with an active brake. I believe you have to have F25 on for that to work. So that basically puts the loco in more of a manual mode. But yeah, so we've got the horns. We're all charged up air-wise. And let's get on our way, shall we? You also have the option of using heavy train mode as well as turning the tail lamps off. So if you've got a nice rake of wagons in the back, F8 turns those tail lamps off. And then heavy train mode is F6. As you can hear there, the engine has just started to ramp up a little bit. If we take off, So I keep repeatedly seeing people saying about the floating center axle on the Cavalex 56 and whether it affects the pulling power or not. So here is a Hornby 56 on the right and a Cavalex 56 on the left. So if we set the Hornby 56 off. You can hear it slipping. Now if we set the Cavalex one off the other way. So yeah, it was a bit of a silly test, so forgive me, but I thought it would sort of put down all the naysayers out there that the floating centre axle isn't a bad idea and it doesn't affect traction power. So the idea of the floating axle is that it's got movement in it so that the axle doesn't actually take the weight of the locomotive. That means that the weight of the locomotive is actually spread evenly through the driven wheels only. So therefore, that won't take away any tractive effort However, it has a big advantage in the fact that if you have any uneven track or track that's not quite perfect, then this will be a lot more compliant and is less likely to cause you issues with derailing. Now, I'm sure many of you that are on here and like your modern image diesels will have felt the wrath of such things as a Backman 66, where any little bad bit of track will throw the front wheel set off and it will cause you a, a derailment. So this is something that you shouldn't experience as much, if at all, with the Cavalex 56. And uh, I must admit, I have now spent a good while running these around my layout and there are a few little problem areas that sometimes cause issues and um, these normally fly through it without any problem at all. You're still gonna get your freak little occurrences here and there where you've got a bit of ballast stuck in a frog on a, on a point or something like that. But um, generally, I find they do hold up very well to inconsistencies in your track. 
Now the Class 60 that's due will have the same setup as well, the floating center axle, and I welcome it completely after getting my hands on them and experiencing it firsthand. So hopefully that puts to bed some of the rubbish you've read online and uh, you'll now realize that it's not a problem at all. In fact, it's a very big benefit. So let's move on.
Well, I've been running the 56s for a while now, as you've just seen. Got the Kodas one still sat behind me. The DCR one is in my hand currently, just so I can take one final look, just to sum up. What can I say then? I think they've done an absolutely amazing job on this. I would put my money on this becoming the model of the year 2024. I'll certainly be voting for it. Um, and whether you do, of course, it's up to you. I've seen pretty much all positive comments online. The only negatives I've seen, one or two people having the very smallest of issues, which are very minor. So that's great to see for Cavalex. Obviously, the quality control is there. They are very well made. Bits aren't falling off every five minutes. So um, it's really nice to see uh, a very positive review for a model in general. Um, as for me, though, super pleased. Obviously, I've got the four here, so which will get a lot of use on the layout. I must go and finish my freight yard, which is over the other side uh, very shortly. So that will give me a kick up the backside to sort that. But um, after running them, yeah, as I say, they run superb. Nothing's falling off them. They sound great. They're plenty loud enough with that new ESU speaker. And the sound file is really nice. Um, I did speak to the Cavalex guys and they said that the sound file, it was recorded with the engine under load, which is nice. It makes a good difference because I know some people cheat a bit and they'll put the engine in engine only and throttle it up. And it, that's why it doesn't always sound quite right and have that bassy sort of tone to it. But these sound superb. The file is great uh, and I've really enjoyed playing with it. Um, one little small thing which a couple of people have mentioned and I agree with is the cradle, which is a superb idea. It would probably be a bit easier if the screws were done with your own fingers. So if they were little sort of thumb screws rather than a screwdriver, just in case you forget your screwdriver when you take them around your mate's house or something like that. Uh, that's the only real sort of thing I could think that I would change. Other than that, really good. I like the floating centre axle. They've got plenty of power and weight to them to pull the heaviest trains. The fans are incredible to watch. Uh, and it's nice that they're in time with the sound file. So they thought of that as well. Um, really well in, well detailed interior. I must get some drivers for mine. Uh, overall, yeah, I'm just completely happy with them. I think they're really, really nice and were worth the wait. So it just leaves me with one final question to ask you, I suppose. And it's not a case of, are you going to order a Cavalex Class 60? It's more a case of, have you already ordered it and which one? Because <laughs> I know I'm getting one. So uh, yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed the video anyway. And uh, I'm going to get going now because I've taken up too much of your time and I want to keep playing with these. So I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Goodbye.